Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. Celine and Bowie on the morning Zoom with Sam and Jane. Advanced voting in the Toronto mayoral race by election starts today and goes for the next six days through Tuesday, June 13th. We've heard from the top polling candidates and yesterday for the first time, Chloe Brown and Anthony Fury were offered a place at the debate table in the CARP mayoral debate here at the Zoomerplex. Eight voices <laughs> trying to make their points, sometimes all at once, yes. which can be challenging if you're a listener <laughs> or a viewer or a candidate. <laughs> We've had the top contenders on the morning Zoom with Sam and Jim with the exception of Chloe Brown and Anthony Fury. So today we welcome Anthony Fury to the show. Welcome, Anthony. Hey, Sam, Jane, great to be here. Nice to have you here for the second day in a row. (laughs) Your platform is founded on what you say are common sense solutions. Toronto's complicated city with challenging and complex problems that may not be solvable simply by using common sense. Help us understand what you mean by common sense solutions. Well, look, you know, I've been going around town meeting with people from all walks of life, all corners of this great city, and and I think people are frustrated with the direction this city is headed in. Uh, I've been talking a lot about how there are concerns that Toronto is, is, is slipping a little bit, our sort of international reputation, the vibe on the street. People see those awful videos of what's going on in Seattle, San Francisco, Vancouver, it's heartbreaking. And they say, we don't want Toronto to go one step further in that direction. I've heard from parents of of all political backgrounds who say they're tired of having to scan the park for needles before the kids play. And that used to just be a downtown thing, but it's happening to me in the East End where I live now. And folks in North York and Etobicoke, they say it's happening to them as well. And I'm an optimist, though, that we can turn this around. We can fix this. And and I'm the father of three small boys. I think this is a city worth fighting for. And and I'll just push back a little bit, Jane, that I think common sense policies are the thing that's actually needed to get the city uh, back on track right now. Okay, your first debate and the first question to all eight candidates was, in 30 seconds, tell us your top priority as Toronto's new mayor. Here's what you said. I'm going to phase out the drug injection sites, replace them with treatment centers, because everyone's telling me that the city of Toronto can't go one step further to being like Seattle, San Francisco, Vancouver, all those awful scenes we see where a compassionate society, we got to help those people, but we can't let our standards slip anymore in our beautiful city. Not affordability or housing or the billion dollar budget. Is this the top priority for most Torontonians? Well, yeah, the question is, what am I going to do first? And I'm going to deal with those issues first because we can't have a vibrant city where businesses want to invest, where we grow the economy. So, well, you know, we can't share the wealth unless we first build the wealth. We can't do those things unless we get Toronto back under control again. What's happening on our streets? Public safety. It's all connected in terms of affordability. So uh, I'm going to be laser focused on all of it. But I said, if there's the one first action item I'm doing, I got to tell you, everyone across the city feels like, yeah, we're concerned about the... uh, the drug injection sites because they are actually spreading to the suburbs. They're building more of them. I want to go on a new path for all of that. But but you better believe that when it comes to affordability issues, congestion, I mean, they're they're top of mind. But how do you solve these problems? And, and, uh, you know, you explain to me what you feel are the priority issues and what people are upset about. And that all makes total sense. Right. But how do you execute What does a common sense execution look like? Yeah, one of the things that's been such a privilege to be a newspaper columnist and and, and, and broadcaster the past over 12 years in this city is you come into contact, and you guys understand this better than I do, you come into contact with, with, with... the people who are the top minds and sectors. And I've never said that as mayor, I'm going to claim I'm the smartest guy in the room. But what I can claim is that I have the skill set to identify uh, the smartest woman and smartest man in all these different sectors, empower their voices, bring them to City Hall. Because I think right now, uh, so many people, particularly in the business community, say, well, why aren't we uh, being brought into City Hall? Uh, you know, either literally or, or metaphorically in terms of their voices, their say. So I'm going to be all hands on deck listening to the experts experts in fields all across the city to get Toronto moving again, make it safer again. It's not going to be a one-man show. I'm proud to say that uh, I'm going to go out there and, and, and identify those people. That that, that was the, the journalistic skill set. And I know, Sam, you and I were just chatting uh, before going on air about yeah. how we got some translatable skills here. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be doing that, too. Uh, you're getting lots of love uh, from the Toronto Sun, uh, endorsed by Conrad Black, too. But some have also described you as far right. Not my words, but words that I've read. So I'm going to ask you, do endorsements help? And what do you think about that description? Does does that scare voters a little? 
that's up to people to decide and I'm not it's up to commentators to call me what they want but like I said I've been proud to have people from uh, all different political backgrounds joining the team we got uh, uh, former liberal people involved I got endorsements from a number of former liberal MPs out there because I think really the situations we're dealing with right now we can't be adding new taxes out there the, the people running against me are talking about road tolls they're talking about municipal sales tax commercial parking levies uh, whether it's young people trying to get ahead in life seniors on fixed incomes we can't be taking more money from people and that is not a I don't think that's a left or a right thing right now I think that's just a common sense thing when it comes to dealing with the drug culture on the streets I don't think it's a left or right thing it's a common sense thing public safety I'm the guy who said I'm going to hire 500 more police officers to increase a visible presence of officers on our streets our communities on public transit people say oh fury 500 that's a lot it's not a lot. It's actually just brings us to what we had in 2014. So that's just the start. And if we could pay for it in 2014 when the budget was way smaller, you better believe that we can pay for it now. And it's an investment we have to make. This is an election about priorities. And I'm hearing at the door, people's priorities are about making sure that they can stop saying, I don't let my 13-year-old on the subway anymore, where they can start saying, I do have confidence in this city. This is a city where I see that, that my family has a future. Services are dependent at least a year from now on the city getting the billion dollars. Josh Matlow says it's $1.5 billion from other levels of government slash property taxes. What is your plan to bridge that gap? It's huge. Yeah, and I will work with Mr. Ford and Mr. Trudeau because the city is spending money on things that are actually not really Toronto taxpayer priorities, more things the federal government should be doing, like how the shelter system is 40% occupancy of recent refugees. We got to care for those people for sure, but that is a federal issue, the managing the refugee intake. So I'll talk with Mr. Trudeau about that, and I'm sure he'll be reasonable at the table on it. But when it comes to the, the quote-unquote revenue tools, the new taxes other people are talking about, as soon as I get into office, me and my team in the mayor's office, we're going to be doing a program review, a spending review to take a look at everything and say, are these items, are the things we're doing laser focused on what taxpayers and residents believe are priorities? Or are there some frills and pet projects that we got to get rid of? Because it is reckless to even talk about taking more money from people's pockets before you do the spending review. You got to do that first before you even talk about tax increases. Okay, we got to let you go. One last question, 15 seconds or less. Why are you the best choice for mayor? Because I know this city. I love this city. It's a city worth fighting for. I'm the father of three small kids. I got to know all the issues as a columnist dealing with these things for the past 12 years. I'm energized. I'm working nonstop. Uh, long, long days. Folks can learn more at fury.ca, F-U-R-E-Y dot C-A. Thanks so much for the opportunity. You're Excellent. welcome. Yeah, Anthony Fury, journalist, husband, father of three boys, Toronto mayoral candidate. Good luck. Thanks so much. The original greatest hits. Consumer Radio. Tony Orlando, live in concert. August 15th and 16th, the Avalon Theatre at Fallsview Casino.